Hey, do you want to have a code like this one, in which you have a Node.js client connecting and interacting with a Cassandra server in your own Docker, so everything running locally? Let's take a look how to do that now. Here is what we are going to do. We are going to create one container based in the Cassandra image. It's going to run as a service. And we are going to map this port from the container with the same port in the local computer because it will be necessary for the Node.js client to connect on that. Once the container is created, we are going to run that, accessing that, and then running the CKL SH. It is the shell to interact with Cassandra server. Then, once we connected there, we are going to create one key space for we then create the table inside this key space, and then we can insert and select data here later using our client. So let's execute it. Let's continue. First, creating the container. Now the container is created. Next step is going to be the, the connection in the container CKL shell. For connecting in CKL shell, we then execute this command here, and then we are going to be connected. Sometimes this command fail in the first time because it's still loading some things inside the container. So let's try here. OK, it was exactly the case now. Sometimes we just wait a few seconds more and try again. Now we are connected and then this, this connection here, we are inside Cassandra. Here we have some kinds of commands we could utilize to see the existing key spaces. Checking the key spaces, we have to execute the describe instruction and then the key space keyword. Doing that, we are going to see the existing key spaces. All of them are key spaces for internal usage from Cassandra. So we are going to create our key space for our client application which lies. Then we have to create this key space using the instruction I'm going to paste here now. Okay, with this basic strategy and just with one replication factor and then our key space is create, created. Inside this key space we are going to create one table but we need to connect to use this key space first. Then we need to use the use keyword with the key space we have just created. And then now we are inside. And the last step is going to be the table creation. OK, now once the table is created, we are able to utilize that, to connect on that for inserting and selecting data. In case we select data uh, right now from this table, we probably are going to see we have here exactly no data, right? Here the table with no data. So now let last step, the client connection. I have prepared this example for you, a very simple example with just these 27 lines of code where you can connect in the container we have just created and then perform one insert of new data in the table we have created and then selecting this data from our client. Here we are going to select the, um, the data executing here and explain that on the user interface. So let's understand that, that now. So here we are using localhost because we are connected locally in our container, but it's locally because we have a redirected the ports. Okay, we have no authentication in at this point because the standard installation from Cassandra container contains no authentication. We need to inform the case space we are utilizing, the case space we have defined. And when we have just one replication factor, as we have defined in the case space creation, we have it. So this is standard name, data center one, you don't need to change that. It's very important you to, to install with npm install this dependence here. Right. 
Then it's a synchronous function, so we need to create one async function here and call that in the end of the code. And here, then we define two constants for inserting data and selecting data. Then here we are going to insert the new data in the table. Here we are going to select the data. This kind of select is a very simple select without filters. But in case you want to use a filter, I have a red let here, the parameters empty, so you could utilize that later. And then here, if some error happens, it's going to display that here. If the table was properly read, the output is going to be printed here. So we can now execute this code. And then you can see here the output, the data we have just inserted. And if you return to our console, let me clear that now, then it's going to be easier to read. And run again the select, the data is here as well. It was simple, right? Who imagined Cassandra could be installed with just two or three lines of code and it happens in just a few minutes. So if you really have to work with Cassandra in your local computer, I hope this video has helped you. In case you have liked this video and you want to have more content like that, please just send me your feedback by subscribing, by commenting, by setting your like at this video. So thank you for watching and see you next time.